Hello and welcome back. Thank you for joining me. I, an ignorant American, shall watch this video by CGP Greg. Love this dude. The difference between the UK, Great Britain, and England explained. I just thought it was kind of funny how I stuttered on CGP Greg and said I loved him. And then someone out there is probably thinking, if you loved him, you probably would know his name a little better than that. Anyway, I think this video is going to go really fast because it's five minutes long and Greg talks quickly. Or Gray. There I go again. <laughs> Gray talks very quick. So this will be an interesting video to react to, I think. Let's just get into it. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Let's go. Oh, well, before I go, <laughs> before I go, um, I just want to say I'm not even going to... I'm, I literally don't know the difference between the UK and, and Great Britain. I don't know. England is inside them. If I'm wrong about that, then hey, then this video is going to be even more entertaining. Let's watch. Welcome to the United Kingdom and a whole lot more explained by me, CGP Gray. Right. United Kingdom, England, Great Britain, are these three the same place? Are they different places? Do British people secretly laugh at those who use the terms incorrectly? Who knows the answers to yes, these questions? I, know I do, do and I'm going to tell you right now. For the lost, this is the world, this is the European continent, and this is the place we have to untangle. I knew that. The area shown in purple is the United Kingdom. Part of the confusion is that the United Kingdom is not a single country, but instead is a country of countries. It contains inside... See, that's weird. That's not fair. I mean, I knew that, but uh, it's still not fair. You're telling me the UK is a country, but so are the countries inside the UK? The confusion is that the United Kingdom is not a single country, but instead is a country of countries. It contains inside of it four co-equal and sovereign nations. England. <laughs> Wales. Oh my gosh. I'm, I, I'm not going to... I'm going to stop there. Wow, my the first of these is England, shown here in red. <laughs> England is often confused with the United Kingdom as a whole because it's the largest and most populous of the nations and contains the de facto capital city, London. To the north is Scotland, shown in blue, and to the west is Wales, shown in white. And Okay, honestly, I was mainly debating between Scotland and Ireland. Is that bad? Often forgotten, even by those who live in the United Kingdom, is Northern Ireland, shown in orange. Each country has... North... Only Northern? As a local term for the population. While you can call them all British, it's not recommended as the four countries generally don't like each other. The Northern Irish, Scottish, and Welsh. Did he just say they don't like each other? While you can other? call them all British, it's not recommended as the four countries generally don't like each other. Really? <laughs> okay, I thought they all just didn't like us. <laughs> They don't like each other. The Northern Irish, Scottish, so and Welsh true. regard the English as slave-driving colonial masters. No matter that all three have their own devolved parliaments and are allowed to vote on English laws, despite the reverse not being true, and the English generally guard the rest as rural yokels who spend too much time with their sheep. However, as the four constituent countries don't have their I'm not going to touch that. Their own passports, they are all British citizens, like it or not. They are British citizens of the United Kingdom, whose full name, by the way, is the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. There we go. There we go. That explains a lot. I didn't know the full name. The United Kingdom. See, okay. Why don't? Uh, okay. Okay. So where's Great Britain hiding? Right here. The area covered in black is Great Britain. <laughs> Unlike England, Scotland, Wales. It doesn't include those islands. In Northern Wales. Ireland, Great Britain is a geographical rather than a political term. Great Britain is the largest island among the British Isles. Within the United Kingdom, the term Great Britain is often. Oh, Great Britain's just an island. Often used to refer to England, Scotland, and Wales alone, with the intentional exclusion of Northern Ireland. This is mostly, but not completely, true, as all three constituent countries have islands that are not part of Great Britain, such as the Isle of Wight, part of England, the Welsh Isle of Anglesey, the Scottish. Hebrides, Aberdeens, the Shetland Islands, the Auckland Islands, and the Islands of the Clyde. So no islands other than the big, this giant island is part of Great Britain. Okay. The second biggest island in the British Isles is Ireland. It's worth noting at this point that Ireland is not a country. Like Great Britain is a geographical, not political term. That's probably the dumbest thing. That's probably, a, out of this video, I hope that's the dumbest thing. Like, Ireland's not a country. So is it Northern Ireland and... Are those the countries? The island of Ireland contains on it two countries, Northern Ireland, which we have already discussed, and the Republic of Ireland. Republic of Ireland. When people say they are Irish, I'm s I feel dumb. They are referring to the Republic of Ireland, which is a separate country from the United Kingdom. However, both the Republic of Ireland and the United Kingdom are members of the European Union, even though England in particular likes to pretend that it's an island in the Mid-Atlantic rather than 50 kilometers off the coast of France. <laughs> but that's a story for another time. To review, the two largest islands in the British Isles are Ireland and Great Britain. Ireland has on it two countries, the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, while Great Britain mostly contains three, England, Scotland, and Wales. These last three, when combined with Northern Ireland, form the United Kingdom. The
There are still many unanswered questions, such as why when you travel to Canada is there British royalty on the money? To answer this we need to talk about empire. You can't have gone to school in the English-speaking world without having learned that the British Empire once spanned a fourth of the world's land and governed nearly a fourth of the world's people. While it's easy to remember the parts of the British Empire that broke away violently, we often forget how many nations gained independence through diplomacy, not bloodshed. These want-to-be nations struck a deal with the empire, where they continue to recognize the monarchy as the head of state in exchange for a local autonomous parliament. To understand how they are connected, we need to talk about I didn't know that. About the crown. Not the physical crown that sits behind glass in the Tower of London and earns millions of tourist pounds for the UK, but the crown is a complicated legal entity best thought of as a one-man corporation. Who created... Rewinding five seconds, because that went over my head a little millions bit. Millions of tourist pounds for the UK, but the crown is a complicated legal entity best thought of as a one-man corporation. Who created this corporation? God did. According to British tradition, all power is vested in God, and the monarch is crowned in a Christian ceremony. God, however, not wanting to be bothered with micromanagement, conveniently delegates his power to an entity called the crown. While this used to be the physical... That is convenient for them. ...legal crown in the Tower of London, it evolved over time into a legal corporation soul, able to be controlled only by the ruling monarch. It's a useful reminder that the United Kingdom is still technically a theocracy, with the reigning monarch acting as both the head of state and the supreme governor of the official state religion Anglicanism. Such are the oddities that arise when dealing with a thousand-year-old monarchy. Back to Canada and the rest. The former colonies that gained their independence through diplomacy and continue to recognize the authority of the crown are known as the Commonwealth realm. They are, in decreasing order of population, Canada, Australia, Papua New Guinea, New Zealand, Jamaica, the Solomon Islands, Belize, the Bahamas, Barbados, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis and Tuvalu. All are independent nations, but still recognize the monarchy as the head of state, even though it has little real power within their borders. There are three further entities that belong to the crown, and these are the crown dependencies, the Isle of Man, Jersey, and Guernsey. Unlike the Commonwealth realm, they are not... Britain got around, huh? ...considered independent nations, but are granted local autonomy by the crown and British citizenship by the United Kingdom, though the UK does reserve the right to overrule the laws of their local assemblies. Are we done now? Almost, but not quite. There I feel like this could go on forever. There's still a couple of loose threads, such as this place, the tiny city of Gibraltar on the southern coast of Spain, famous for its rock, its monkeys, and for causing diplomatic tension between the United Kingdom and Spain. Or what about the Falkland Islands, which caused so much tension between the United Kingdom and Argentina that they went to war over them? These places belong in the last group of crown properties known as British Overseas Territories, but their former name, Crown Colonies, gives away their origin. They are the last vestiges of the British Empire. Unlike the Commonwealth realm, they have not become independent nations and continue to rely on the United Kingdom for military and sometimes economic assistance. Like the Crown Dependencies, everyone born within their borders is a British citizen. The Crown Colonies are, in decreasing order of population, Bermuda, the Cayman Islands, everyone born within their borders is a British citizen. Everybody born within those borders is a British citizen. I, oh my god, that's, that's kind of like, mind blowing. The Crown Colonies are, in decreasing order of population, Bermuda, the Cayman Islands, the Turks and Caicos Islands, Gibraltar, the British Virgin Islands, Akrotiri and Dekelia, Anguilla, St. Helena. I've never heard of that. Acrotaria and Dekelia? I'm just going to straight up say. I've never. Most of these places I've at least heard of, but Acrotaria and Dekelia. Sorry. Haven't heard of it. Lena, the Ascension Islands, Tristan de Cuna, Montserrat, the British Indian. What is this arrow pointing to? Tristan de Cuna? Where is it? Ocean Territory, the Under South the water? and South Sandwich Islands, the Falkland Islands, the British Antarctic Territory, and the Pickern Islands. For our final Venn diagram, the United Kingdom is a country situated on the British Isles and is part of the crown which is controlled by the monarchy. Also part of the crown in the British Isles are the crown dependencies. The independent nations of the former empire that still recognize the crown are the Commonwealth realm, and the non-independent remnants of the former empire are the British overseas territories. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> um, that was a lot more information than I than I can ever remember, one, two. But it is good to know, like, just how complicated it is, because at least I know that. But number two, um, the difference between the UK, Great Britain, and England, that's the important part. And I think I've got that somewhat down. And it also made me feel a lot better to know that some people in the UK forget about Northern Ireland themselves that they're part of the UK, so that made me feel a little bit better. Um, UK is... <laughs> I shouldn't I shouldn't be doing this to myself, because I always suck. I always forget stuff right when I, like, try to remember it. Does that make sense? My memory's horrible. So I'm probably just going to quit. I'm just going to stop there. But the UK most is, is the United Kingdom. It's Northern Ireland, Wales, and Scotland. Got it. And Great Britain just includes, it's that, 
No, Britain's just the island with England in it. That 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 big island. Right? Okay, well, thank you for watching. I'm a little bit less dumb, maybe. I kind I feel more dumb now just because I don't remember. That was that was a lot of information. Uh, I might have to watch this again. Uh, subscribe to this channel if you want to see some more reactions to United Kingdom stuff or Great Britain stuff or England stuff, which is why I watch this video. I need to, I kind of need to know the difference. Um, a one hour documentary in five minutes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but either way, thank you just for watching and I hope you have a fantastic evening over there across the lake. Goodbye.